Parshas Noyach, Tavshin Peihei. We're going to speak about the side of the Yoyna. You know, this whole shlichus that uh, Noyach decided to do, he started by sending first um, the raven, and then he sent it the dove. Let's look in the Psukim, you know, what is Yoyna trying to teach us here. Uh, what is Noyach trying to teach us here, because it's really mind-boggling. It says in the Pasuk, let's read the, learn the, the few Psukim here. It's going to say one Pasuk about the Oyrev and five Psukim about the Yoyno. It says, Vaishalach es Oyrev. You can pay attention from the beginning. It doesn't say Vayishlach. He says Vaishalach. Vaishalach is a lotion that is used when you for uh, divorce or sending for good and not um and not just sending in a mission. It's interesting the lotion. By Shalach Oirev, he sent the raven, Vayetse, Yatsoi, Vashab. He was going around. I'm not gonna go into in here because otherwise I'll have to give a shear on the Oirev. It's a very, it's even deeper than the um, than about the dove. And he sends him, I'm just gonna highlight this, so we're gonna see it a little bit later. Because we 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 need to point out the differences between the shlichus of the uh the shlichus of the of the uh, raven. And the dove. I'm just trying to highlight this, but I have something from, uh, if I can move this, that, you know, doesn't allow me to. Uh... Okay, so. Um... Let me try this. No. So we, we're going to get back to it. And then, by Shalach Esa Yoyna, he sent the Yoyna again. The Lashen is by Shalach. Meaning the intention was not just only for uh, a shlichus. Me'itoi. What do you mean me'itoi here? We know it, the only animals that remained alive were the one in the teva. So, so what does he mean me'itoi? Couldn't be from anywhere else. Leroy's to see. Hakalu hamayim me alpnei ho adama. You see, before he sent the oirev to see if the land, so if the water has dried up. He is sending a different mission. I mean, the language is totally different. Adievoishes hamayim. Until the, the water dried out from the from the earth. And here, Hakalu Hamaim have they finished? I mean, have they uh, gone? Me'alpne Adama. From the surface of the Adama, not the Aretz anymore. <laughs> Maybe Shabbos I'll give a share on the Sheva Aratzis, the seven terms for the land, and the seven lands there are. And which are three inhabited, counting ours, maybe. Then we go, we keep on. The the she couldn't uh, put her feet down. Really. Okay, put yourself in the situation of. Um, of the Yoin. She got freed. She's out the door. She flies. Okay. There's nowhere to land on. And um, and she comes back to Noyach. So now I'm going to break you this story. She couldn't land on the Teva. She would rather come back inside. The Teva was huge. 
The table was above the water. Stay on the table. You can't put your feet anywhere else. Now, let me ask you another question. The table landed on Hare Ararat, on the Mount of Ararat in, 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 in um, Turkey. So you know that the mountains were already exposed. What do you mean she couldn't find a place to put her feet down? For sure, there were a lot of places. If the huge table with its weight and everything was able to land on the ground already, obviously that the Yoina had plenty of places where to land, where to where, where, where to sit. And uh, <clears throat> and no, yeah, I don't understand you. In Pekid Rabbi Eliezer, it's brought down the Midrash also that how did Oig Melech Abashan survived the, um, the Mabul because he, he sat on the outside of the Teva. And Noyach made him a hole so he can breathe there just for his nose and his mouth. And, and through there, he provided him, you know, food. You don't need the oil. You don't need the Yoyna. Ask Oi, please check. Guy is a huge guy. Go check. Is this water? I mean, still on earth or not? You don't even have to get tired. You don't even have to go fetch a bird, open a window. Just go wherever you. Next time you give him a meal. And what? You didn't ask him all along? I mean, he was getting pounded with the rain. So he knows when the rain stopped. You could hear, I mean, the, the rain stopped. He knew exactly, you know, what, if there was water or not. So, Noyak, what are you doing here? What's the purpose of you sending out all these, um, you know, birds in order to complete a mission? A mission to tell you if there's water on the land. That's the Pashos, right? If there's water on the land or there's no water on the land. <laughs> this you could have known in a second. The next time you bring a meal to Oigman Achabash and ask him, please go check. Because if the Teva with its weight can, can be sustained by the mountain, Oigman Achabash can stand. And who knows if he didn't leave at that time. And we're going to prove from the Pasuk that Oig was there also. I mean, it's not only, you know, a Midrash, it's, a, it's a, this. Um, Abiyudah Hasid brings a, a Mamish Araya from the Pasuk, which we're going to see as we go along in this year. So we understand there is something else behind just the little story of sending out uh, either the raven or the dove. Let's keep on here. Vatasha Vela Vela Teva, so couldn't find anywhere to stand. She came back, the dove came back. Because there was water on the surface of all earth. Now, we're not in Adama anymore. We're in Haaretz. Okay. But again, that's for Shabbos. But now look at the, how much the Pasuk is going to describe every detail. He extended his arm and he opened his, his hand. He took her. Vayave Oisa, and he brought her, Elav, to him, Elateva. In, well, already the first time it says Vatash of Elav. Does he have to say Elateva? Where was Noach? In the Teva. You didn't have to say Elateva. You don't need those words. And now, Again, El Hateva, but we already know it. You want to tell me once, you know, maybe I can swallow that. But the second time, obviously, you're trying to tell me something else. Noyach sends again after seven days, sends again the Yoina from the Teva. Min Ha Teva, like, okay, you didn't get it. It's going from the Teva, not from the Hare Arara, from the Teva. Very interesting Lashi. Now she comes back in the evening and she had Ale Zayis Torah Befiha. Very hard words to translate. 
What's Ale Zais Taraf Befiha? Ale Zais, it's a, it's a leaf from an uh, olive tree. Uh, this I can understand. Taraf, it's a verb, it's an adverb, or it's an adjective. I don't know what it is. Taraf is when, when an eagle is toyra. It, it is a, it's a bird of um, that prays and that goes, you know, and um, preys on other birds or on other animals. But the Yoina is a sweet bird. The word Toiref, praying, doesn't apply to her. So what? So now that you know, like we say, Taraf, Toiref, Yosef, he was prayed out, he was taken It's it, it's a, a lotion that 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 hints, you know, praying, killing. We're talking about the Alezais. So nice, the Yoina. She only took one leaf. What it means, Torah befiha in her mouth. I mean, do we really care? You know where it is. She brought the Alezais to give her a hint. How did he know? How did he know? Maybe it was a, a tree that got uprooted. And she saw, you know, a tree and she brought it out his eyes. Then he waits seven days, sends her back, and she ne never came back. Obviously, you understand like me. We don't understand the extent of the what the Pasuk described about the dog. What's the mission of the dog? What's the hint she tries to give to Noyah? What's this ex this language in the Pasuk? You know, to, to, to describe us, you know, details that really are not relevant. So why doing this? Okay, let's go in the shir now. On Pirkei Avais, there's a pirush, very famous pirush, called the Radal, Lebdovid Luria. Always explains very well the, the Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer. So on the Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer that I mentioned, that uh, Oig Melech Abashan was still alive. And he remained alive by sitting, curling around the, the, the Teva. And okay, he adds there, he sold himself as an Evet to Noyach, promise he's not going to harm the, the descendants and so forth. So there's a Machlokis, where do we learn it from? But the Radal brings from the, the Balaturim, Toysus brings it, Bisham Rabbi Yudha Chassid. It says, Vayishar Ach Noya. And in the world remained only Noya. What is Ach Noya? We know, I mean, it, it was not only Noya, it was Noya and uh, the one in, in the Teva. Says Rabbi Yudha Chassid, Ach Noya equals 79, equals Oig. That's why the the Pasuk changed its lotion and 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 told you, gave you a hint here that Oig Melech Abashan remained alive. Now there's a machlok is how do we learn how how Oig Melech Abashan remained alive? It's be, uh, it's from the word refaim. If it's uh, if it's from Achno, you know, I'm not gonna go into it. The Gemara says in Sanhedrin, 
we got to try giving an explanation, try to see a path in Kazal, see, see if we can understand, you know, this forest of, of information and, and, and um, details, if we can make sense. So, Dukmara in Sanhedrin, Kufche Samud Beis, they explain the whole thing of the Oyrev, the, the, the Yoyna also. So, it, it points out the fact that Me'itoi is really not supposed to be in the past. By Shalach Esa Yoyna Me'ito. He sent the Yoyna, like you said about the 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 the, the Oyrev, you sent him. We all know you're in the Teva. What do you mean you sent him, you sent it from you? What's this from you adds you in the Pasuk? Says Rabbi Mia in the Gemara because Kosherbergs live with Sadiqim. That's it. Nobody has a problem with this in the Gemara. Everybody, you know, accepts the... I have a problem with it. I don't understand that. Nobody argues on the... Kosher birds have a... Can you believe if every dove, you know, from Eretz Yisrael would want to live with Reb Chaim, that's all? It'd be invaded. What do you mean if kosher birds like living with Tadikim? What's the point when you say that and, and how relevant it is to, our, to, to, to what we're learning that he, he, uh, Noach sent it out. Rabbi Amir, I don't understand. No one argues on you on the Gemara. So, oh, by the way, there were other kosher birds. So why only about the Yoyna, it says Me'ito? You see, I have a second way to argue about this Gemara. How is it possible that no one argues about it? The Ine, so now we got the 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 Gemara keeps on. The Ine Ale Zayis Toraf Befiha. She had a, a um, an olive tree leaf in her beak. Says Rabbi Leoz, uh, the Yoyna said before Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Ribbono Shel Oilam. And here we're gonna have a machloikas between the Midrash and the Gemara. Who did she say that to? But anyway, it says that I'd rather have bitter panasa coming from you rather than sweet panasa, my mezonis, you know, coming from the hand of a person. And that's why the Gemara explained, Rabbi Laza explained, Torah means hatrifeni lechem chuki. Pray for my for my sustenance, the daily sustenance. Rashi comes and gives us a little bit of more light here and says, since it doesn't say me'itoi, because it says the same beginning of the sentence, vayshalach esayorev and vayshalach esayoyno, since it doesn't say me'itoi, but the oirev, this is harabir miya, deducted that only the oifes the hoirim like being with the tzaddikim, but not the oifes me. What does he add to our understanding of this parsha, or what Noyach wanted to do, or what the Yoyna wanted to tell Noyach? Number two, Rabbi Loza. You come explain the parsha that the Yoyna had that leaf in the mouth, in the beak, because she told HaKadosh Baruch Hu, all right, drop it. When you come back to Noyach, drop it. Why do you have to come to Noyach with the leaf in your mouth? Or bring something else? Why the leaf? Why the very leaf that could be hurtful to Noyach? He may misunderstand what you mean with that. Bring him an olive. You know, olive tree, bring him an olive. I wipe the leaf that has, according to you, Rabbi Lazar, a meaning that I don't want to eat from that guy. He's been feeding me for a long time, right? 
But I don't want to eat from you. I want to eat from you, Akadosh Baruch Hu. That's really nice. Do you believe? If you had someone, you invited a guest, uh, Ani, someone who had nothing, and you felt Nebuchadnezzar, he hasn't eaten for a couple of days, so you really fed him very good food. On his way out, he turns around and he says, Akadosh Baruch Hu, I want to eat from you. I don't want to eat anything from him, even if it's good. I'm not interested. That would be offensive. A person has to be Makir Teva. He has to recognize someone, a benefactor. Someone did him a favor. He's a shliach. He gave you tzedakah. He gave you this. Say thank you. Don't come to him in, in, in an offensive way and telling him, I don't want what you, you, you the best you want to give me. I only want to be relying on HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You want to be a kana, you want to be a frumak? Be a frumak on your own terms for yourself, but not offensively toward others. There's no mitzvah in this. The Midrash Tanchuma comes in Pasha Tetzaveh, it's going to blow our minds. I just want to show Gradually, I'm moving from the Pshat. I'm moving into the Drush. And after that, I'm going to go lower. I just want to show you that whatever Chazal is going to tell us, everything is basically hidden because there's a huge side in here for us. But it hasn't been revealed you know, clearly, it's inside the words, and we're going to see that Chazal hinted it. But at this point, we're not there, so I'm going gradually, I'm going gradually down. Now we're in the Jewish, we're in the Midrash. The Tanoim Akdashim. I'm going to show you that Pasuk, because that Pasuk is not, uh, someone everyone knows, it says, Hinach Yafara Yossi, how beautiful you are. My um, Rayasi is my friend. My it's more a bit more than my friend. Hinach Yafa a Naich Yoini. You are beautiful and you have eyes of a dove. In Tehillim, the dove comes back. Uh, the whole Azea uh, explained uh, the Yoina about uh, the Neshama, Knesset Yisrael. So Yoina has something many, many Morris talk about the Yoina and, 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 and Nisim that were done to the Tzadikim through the Yoina. But I want to remain on a mission here to understand what was Noyach doing? And what the Yoyna answer. That's what I want to understand. The Pshat of the Psuki. What is the Torah telling us there? The, the Midrash is going to bring three. Is, gonna, is mentioning three attributes to the Yoyna. Number one. When a Yoyna finds a mate, never, ever goes with someone else. That's it. They're for life. He dies, she remains unknown. That's it. So there is trustworthiness in an animal that we haven't seen. You know, it, it, it defies any logic. Hashem created me. I have a mate. I can have children. I'm not looking anywhere else. This is my mate. This is my benzo. And I'm staying with it all my life. While the Midrash says about the Oirev, why is the Oirev, what is the raven abandoning his children? His babies doesn't feed them because when the eggs hatch, The babies are white. So he's looking at his mate and he's saying, you cheated on me. You cheated with another bird. That's why they're white. So the male abandons the, the jig. She knows she hasn't done nothing. 
the female. But she's looking at the thing. She says, it's another bird that dropped the eggs into my nest. She abandons the nest. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has mercy on the babies of the Oyrev that are calling. Because there's no one, that's the only bird that abandons his children. And he feeds them. Well, just for the, the, how the Midrash finishes. Uh, so with their excrements, there's a mosquitoes that come to eat it. And the the are eating those mosquitoes. That's how they fed, that's how they grow. But the Yoina has more of a normal life. She has a mate and um, doesn't uh, change forever. There's never a chance that uh, it's going to be a different male uh, or a different female. Always the same. After every season, they remeet. The second, the second uh, attribute of the Yoina is all the birds, when you want to shake them, even the uh, kosher birds. They jump all away, they do everything. When you catch the Yoina, it doesn't put up any uh, fight. You can move the neck, call me, same thing as the Bnei Yisrael. That when it comes their time, and they're caught by the Goim, al Kiddush Hashem, they let themselves be killed without uh, without a fight. For them, it's part of the avoidance. We have time on service. So I'll give you uh, a lot more depth on this point. What happened in Heichel Aschus? Where do they go, these Neshamas? All these Neshamas that were killed by Goim, what happens to them in Shomayim? Who visits them every day? Who cries with them? It's not for this year. Anyway. But just because of the situation and we, we have lost so many soldiers and everything. The Zaya says, at the end of the day, it's a big toy of who does to these nations. Because they're reaching a level that they would have never reached in their lifetime. And because some of the years of their lives were taken away, HaKadosh Baruch considered that they would have made Shuva and be Mekayim the whole Torah. The one who visits them every day is the Mashiach himself, the Nesham of the Mashiach. They see it every day. And they, in the, in the fourth Heichel, so when you say Hallelujah, and you, those who have the good uh, Sidurim, and you see Heichel Aschus, you know that this is where this Meshav is. Okay, so um, and the third attribute is that the, the Yoina brought light to the world. Which light? Because she has Shem and Zayis. <clears throat> she brought the Ale, the leaf, and from that tree, we make oil. And therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and, and therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, um, decided that, that um, we have to light the menorah with Shem and Zeiss because the same way the, the, um, she brought <clears throat> light to the world, that's going to be the light to be shining in the Beis Amikdash against <clears throat> against you know the darkness and so forth the oil of the shaman eyes very interesting very interesting she brought a uh, ali's eyes we're going to see from the midrash even pasha stetsave that 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 um the whole union that we have to light we shaman eyes it's only because of this Yoyna and what she did here. But if it was so, she should have brought an olive. Why bringing a leaf from the leaf? There's only bitterness. 
and 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 you don't make oil out of this. So how is the midrash learning that from the yoyna? You know we have the light in the world. Very very interesting. Rabbi Chia says in the Midrash, you know, we cannot use for the Menorah, Shemin, uh, whatever, all these Shemin, Shemin, Shem, Shemin, we say in the Mishnah, Shemin, Shem, Shemin, Shemin, Egoizim, Shemin, 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 Dagin, Shemin, Pakuin, Shemin, Itron. He doesn't mention all of them, but uh, just on top of my head, that's what the Mishnah, you know. Um, so oh, even the good oils that you can light, the Nair of Shabbos, you cannot light. Um, you cannot light the menorah. To light the menorah, kindle the menorah is only with Shem and Zayt. Why? Because of the Yoyna. Gives an example of Ichia. He said, a king had a, an army. And, you know, all the squadrons, whatever they're called, revolted against the king, besides one. What did he do with those guys? So now he took them all and he said, now you, lieutenant, you, um, a commander, and you're a general. So he took all of them and he brought them to a uh, high position. Why? Because they showed that they stand by the king. They trust the king. Even in a matter when most of the, the army revolted, they did not. And therefore, they're trustworthy and they should be placed on top of his arm. The same way, since the, 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 the oil, the shaman zais, whatever did with the noyach there brought light, Akadosh Bochu took it and put it on top of all the other oils, and that's the oil. That's going to be used in the base of English. Now, again, you think that Midrash, the, the, the previous question applies here. What do you mean? It's all his eyes he brought. You don't make oil from this. Oh, not from the tree. Oh, I see. Number two, what light did he bring to Noyach? Oh, to let him know that the water uh, resided already. This he didn't need the Yoyna for this. He, he could have asked Agmila Chabasha. So, what is the point? What is the point of this whole uh, Indian? What is the point? Had you telling me that her by bringing, by bringing, um, Alizais, you know, all of a sudden everything turned out good. No, we're talking a world that's been destroyed. There's no living creature outside to the point that there's a machloikas. Where did she get the Alizais? She get it from Eretisro because there was no marble in Eretisro. She get it from the Gan Eden, you know, because there was no tree. That maybe the, because the waters after they didn't fall on Eretz Israel, but after that, after the Mabul, after the Shabbos, who opened the gates, even of Eretz Israel, and got washed out. So he had to go in the Gan Eden. However, Rab Mary says, no, 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 that's not the Pshat. That's not the Pshat. The Pshat is she wanted to tell Noyach, I don't want anything of your food. I don't want any of your favors. I'd rather. Suffer, but be on the Akadosh Baruch Hu, that be on the you. We mentioned already, you know, in the previous midrash, how rude it is. It's Kafu Toiba. Now you're telling me the good attributes of the of of the you know, Tell me about the bad also. That's how she reacts after you know someone takes care of her for one year without resting, bringing their food on the time they wanted to eat. You know, not to change their habits. That's how you react to him. Instead of saying thank you, really appreciate it. There's no, there's no way to gain any path, neither through the Gemars, neither through the, the Midrashim. Let's go down to the Zion. Because 
we need to understand what's going on here, and it's huge. The Zaya says, it's a Zaya Chodosh, that the Yoino is Knesset Yisrael. Because it's the Neshama. Yoino is always representing the Neshama, and the Neshama of the Bnei Yisrael is called Knesset Yisrael. It's in the Kesar of the Malchus, for those who know The Zer says, we see in the Pasuk four languages with the Yoyna. Remember, we asked the question. The Teva was on Hare Arara. So, and he landed on the mountains. So, at least this part of the mountain and above was free of water. The Yoyna could have gone there. The Yoyna could have stand on the table. So the Zoya learns that this is a hint to the first Galus of the Bnei Israel. After Harbin by Rishon, they're going to go to Bob. And what he means, Veloi Matzah Hayoyna Manoyach can find a menucha, the calf ragla for the palm of her foot. Oh my gosh, what 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 is it? Uh, uh, an extensive language, language in such an arichus lotion in here. It's not needed. Comes to hint us that the first Gaulus will be terrible to the Bnei Yisrael. Tremendous achzarius from the locals and they will have no menu. But it says right after Batashav Elov El Hateva. And the, 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 they're going to do tshuva. The tshuva will be accepted and they will return in the teva. I told you guys, many, you know, especially those that were here during sukkahs, the teva is the sukkah. It's the Anani Kovid, it's the Shechina, it's the Kvoid Hashem, whatever you want to name it, that's what is the teva. Teva would have not made it through these turbulent waters, you know, of, of the Mabri. The only reason that Teva is because he had the Anani COVID that were in the Midbar, the Zaya. But um, now the second language is by Yosef Shalach Esayoyno Me'itoy, from him. We ask what this Me'itoy from, we know the Pshad of the Gemara already. So he sent her back out after a week. Says the Zerah Kodesh, this refers to the second Golus after Baishani. It, uh, 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 during Baishani, it's going to be Golus Yava. And that it was so tough on the Bnei Israel because they can do the mitzvahs and everything that even the Gemara says in um, this Gemara. It's a Gemara in Sanhedrin also. That um, I think it's Sadiq Zion. That, um, but anyway, I mean, the Zara now it says the face, they blacken their face like the, the 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 bottom of the pot. You know, the pot it's on wood. You you get it gets all black. So so much they suffered the Bnei Israel under the Yevani that the face turned black. This time it says, So it says, It means they really waited, they really waited, instead of doing chuba right away, they waited, but when it was really the limit, they couldn't anymore, you know, Amisrael was really in danger, they made chuba, it was accepted, Akadosh Baruch Hu, Vayishlach Yodo, he sent his, uh, because they were incapable of, uh, of, of, of coming uh, by themselves. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu sent his hand and brought them back into the table. They were first ones, they still had their moon, they still had everything. But the Yevanim, they washed out every meter of the possible of the Bnei Israel with their lifestyle and, 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 and their philosophy and everything. 
And therefore here we have an extensive lotion to tell us on the, that by the second Golos, we're going to need the intervention of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to bring us back to Eretz Yisrael. It's not going to be that easy. Because they suffered way too much over there. And then, we have Golos Paras, That that um, the Gemara is about a Hashverosh. Now remember the Gemara. The Gemara says the same thing, but not on Galus Yavon. On Galus Hashverosh. What was his name? Hashverosh. Is because he blackened their face like the bottom of a pot that's on the fire. So. Galus Paras. Yes. When they went to um, to Iran and all these countries, and then we're gonna have Galus Sedoim that sent her the last time and never came back. Why? Because the Geula of Bnei Yisrael is totally on the Tshuva, like exactly the dream of Yaakov Avinu in the Sulam. He saw the Malach of Adam going, 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 going until he reached the skies. And he was still not going down. And Yaakov panicked. Is there going to be a, a, a geula at the end of the days? But the Shabbat says, don't worry. Even if he reach the skies, I will take him down. So, and this is why the Yoyna never came back. Because it gives a hint on the full Galuyas. That the Bnei Yisrael, Noyach, was panicked. What's the point? What's the point of a world if it's going to be Chorban after Chorban after Chorban? Maybe not for the whole world, but the main part of the world is us. And he was worried. Oh, you're going to tell me, are you, well, why is he worried about the Bnei Yisrael? Noyach is not our forefather. We'll see. We'll see who Noyach is. It says, it's Sadiq Tamim. You know, we'll see exactly who Noyach is in a few minutes. So, and he realizes that everything is based on truth. Now, when we, he's going to start sending his mission, he wanted to gain knowledge about these points. Yeah, but if you're talking about the real water, nah, he could have asked Augmen Habasha. He wanted to know the outcome of the gulfs. And the Geula of Achris Ayam. And you will see that in the words of the Apostle. Now we're going to have to go a little bit deeper to understand the Zoyer HaKadosh. So, so uh, let's go and uh, There's one pasuk that doesn't, it's not here, uh, I, I didn't bring. It's, uh, Noyach open, Vaiftach is in Asher Asa. It's the pasuk, if you allow me a second, I'm going to copy it from here. I have it in, uh, There it is. So there's a machlokes in the midrash if Tsoihar and white Tsoihar. Uh, I don't remember if uh, in this year I'm going through that or not. Or it's uh, the year on Shabbos. Uh, I, I just don't remember. So vayiftach noyach eschalo in hativa, asher asa noyach open the 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 window of the teva that he did. Well, who else built the the the, the table? Him. So what what he means Asher also. And why he went to Khalana Teva. I, I don't want to go too much in that pasuk. I want to re remain with I just want to show you something. Um I 
Asher also equals 876 equals Bavel, Paras, Yavan, Edoim, Shrina. Exactly. Oh. The four Galuyas where even the Shekhinah will have to follow Bechot Sarosom Loi Tsar. Wherever Bnei Yisrael are in Tsar, the Shekhinah is with them in that Tsar. So Noyach was preparing something to know about the future in Ochinami, exactly like the Zoya says, to see that it's a reality now that uh, the Bnei Yisrael We'll go in Golos. And as we say, how do we call the Golos? Chorben Besamikdash. Besamikdash is the entire world. So it's a Chorben also. He said, says the Roy Shalatayra, look at this word. Ad Yevoishes Hamayi Me'al and and the Oyrev was back and forth. Who's the Oyrev? So the Midrash says it's David Amelch. He was always calling Akadosh Borchu like an Oyrev, nonstop. Pa, 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 pa. Crack, crack, crack. Nonstop. And here, the Rosh. Look at this. We're talking about the Rishonim here. The Rosh says, the Balaturim, his son, took it also, but uh, same letters at Tishbi. Eliyahu at Tishbi. So Eliad Yevoishes. It can only come the Mashiach after Eliyahu started, came first. Now, this equals to 712, 713 plus the cradle equals Shuba. Now we started seeing a path here in the Zoya, exactly in the words. And now the Rishonim that gave us these little hints, now we started seeing, you know, uh, a, a little bit of clarity. Yoyna, so Chazal say the Oyrev didn't do his shlichus, didn't accomplish his mission, but the Yoyna did. If you take these two words, at the very beginning of the mission, and if you take the 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 These two words at the end of the mission. They equal. 522. These two words. In other words. We don't know what it means here. But we can see that there's a, a play with words in the Pasuk for a purpose. And what's the purpose is accomplishing a certain mission that the, the Yoyna was sent for. Okay. And, and we see that the value is mamish equals. So what's the whole Indian here? There's a, a huge side, and I don't know if I if I if I'm gonna go into it or not, but uh, huge, 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 huge. Let me touch it. Something very, very deep uh, that Dariya Kodesh brings in its time. There's no, there's no safer in uh, a piece of it that doesn't bring down this safe. Hakalu Amayim equals 236. Those who understand a bit more, always remember, I'll come back to this one, way, you know, remember the Ralu, the 236 like this. It's, it's huge. It's huge. If we take the word Mishkan in full, 
I'm going to explain it through the Megale Amukas now. It's a little bit simpler. We have Mem, we have Shin, we have Chaf, and we have Nun. Says the Megale Amukas, if you take the inside letters, because obviously Seamus the Rally, but um, you take the, the inside letters, the, the equal is exactly 236. This is when it says, Ukvayd Hashem, Male Yesamish. When the Kuwait Hashem is here in full, you're always going to find that number 236. Always. So, um, interestingly, why Noyach is in that position right now? Because Noyach equals 58. Equals to avoid Hashem. Everything falls back on their feet. So now Noyach has a sight, sees something, and wants to try to help already from his position. Why? Because he went through a huge star for that year. He has a lot of schusim. And he wants to try to, 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 to be helpful for, for, for his descendants after. And what's the soil? I may add on the Ralu, on the 236, it's a number that 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 points out to limitations. Something, for instance, if you want to drink water, you need um a cup. Because and the cup will limit how far the water can go. So in order for you to be able to take the water from the bottle you're pouring in and bring it to yourself, you need a smaller vessel, which means a vessel, it means something that's going to hold the water, whatever you want, the amount you want, in where you need to, to have it for you to be able to quench your thirst. So there's always an union of Kvulis. If you look at the Mishkan, the Mishkan had the Chatzar, had four walls, you know, all around the Mishkan. I mean, the Kvayi Dashem was remaining there, would not expand. Obviously, Cholares Kvayi but the, the core of it would remain in the Mishkan. And anyone who wanted to see Hashem had to come to the Mishkan. That's why also... The, Touching a lot of soydas, I just have to watch my mouth. Uh, five times choyma, Yerushalayim, Saviv, choyma. All these we're talking about now. You're gonna you read Tehillim in a different way. Equals two thirty six. Every time you go on the outside, so a gvura, it's never something bad. Per se, you know, uh, it depends how high you take the gvura. If you take the gvura, the lower part, it's the dinim. If you take the gvura, the higher part, it's chasad. So we have to understand that in our life, we would not be able to live as human beings unless we had gvuras. We have limitations. That's what the Torah has mitzvahs. They have limitations in, in, in where we go in life. The, so now we understand Noyach. I'm going to give you another one here. We know that the Mazala Ilah 
the biggest muzzle of the Bnei Israel is Noitzer Chesed, the Midah that HaKadosh Baruch Hu creates Chasadim even when they don't have any to rely upon. Now, Noyach is Noitzer, the, the Rashi Tevis of Noitzer Chesed. Look how far he goes. Now, when you're going to read, and you have the Machlekes, if he was in the door of Avram, if he was not in the door of... Um... So come to the Shia and Shabbos, you will understand that Noyach was worth four times Avram. So what 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 this Machlekes... Okay, it has a different shot, the Machlekes and the Gemara. But don't take it uh, for granted that who was Noyach. Noyach was huge, huge. Up that he could touch the 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 the, the, the mazala ila for him he was nothing. You know, if if it wouldn't turn out to be, probably have a, a hint of gaiva, I would have told you where my name is hinted here. Because it, my my name in the Torah is hinted in uh, Prasha Snoyev. Everyone, everybody's name is hinted somewhere in the Torah. There's no human being. Nobody came to this world that's not hinted in the Torah. Mine is hinted here. So, uh, Noyach wanted to see. He says, look, I, he knew that as soon as he's going to get out of the Teva, he's going to try to negotiate with HaKadosh Baruch Hu and complain. Actually, he's going to cry to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You know, because he's he wants to, 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 to take something, get something from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Aftacha, there is no more chover. So he prepares himself knowing what can he do for Bnei Yisrael and, and, and before. And that's what it is here. He sent. Now the Yoyna Lir Oris. What's Lir Oris? If we were still in the previous shot that we we, we 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 showed that we didn't come out, you know, that uh, he could have asked, oh, you made a Chabash, and if it's only to see if the waters are still there, ask. But according to the Zoya, the way we learned it, now we started learning the whole Mahalach, according to the Zoya, it doesn't make any sense to say Lir Oris here. Lir Oris equals 637 equals Bito Yetzer Hara. Noyach is very realistic. He's saying the door of the Mabu, that were huge Neshamas, that he, they couldn't even hear his words had no effect on it. He was could not be Machzir Bichuba one guy. Why is that? Because of the fate of Adam Arishon, the Yetzer Hara, Zara says, whenever we say Yetzer Hara, includes both male and female. The Yetzer Hara was in charge in the world. And there's no way human could fight against it. And he wanted to know from the Yoyna if he was still in charge of the world, then there was no, no possibility of any civilization uh, rooting itself in the world. Impossible. And that's why he said the Loshen Hakalu Hamayim. We, we, we. You didn't say your voices if they dried up, like you say by the oil red. You say hakalu. And 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 kalu with a kuf, because usually it's a chaf. And kalu means to uh, to exterminate. Hamayim. Who is the mayim? The chasadim. Now for sure, you had chasadim and gvura. You had mayim as a doinim and good mayim. But mayim usually, ma mayim chaim leoylam of Torah. The Torah is compared to mayim. It's the chasadim. He wants to know if the chasadim finished up, finally tempered, 
temper the gvurs. That's what he wanted to know. Is now, since they have paid the oinish, since they have already, you know, um, being destroyed, and as the Gemara, they're not going to come up, and they, they have no Ilam Abba, they have nothing. Since they have paid it, now is the world a livable place, or still the 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 the, the Yetzer Hara is shoyled? And and we didn't understand here. And if you take this, if you think there's a there's a doubt in what I'm saying right now, let's take this lotion. This equals 571. This equals Bavel, Karas, uh, Yabon, Edom. Again, there we go. Exactly. He wanted to know, Noyach wanted, since he knew what was happening, he wanted to do to know if there's anything he can do about this. She came. The Yoyna went to Ganeiden because he told her to go to Ganeiden. That's the only place. Ale Zais Torah Befira. Very strange language. Let's go a little bit into it. Uh, where is that? Okay, the Zoya learns it more. I don't have time to go in the Zoya. Time uh, flies on the Ali's eyes. I'm not even at a third of this year. Zeiss is what makes the oil, right? Equals 470. Plus the coil. So we're going to do uh, plus the coil. I don't have to be right. Equals 480. Equals Neitzer Chesed. We're gonna we, we're gonna close the cycle. Here. You're gonna see it, it. It's a totally closed cycle. Equals Chatas. The the the. Whenever you have Shem and Zeis, um. In the Kavanis of Bikas Koyhanim, which Moshech, the Shemin Zais from on top, it's the Brach. When someone is Choyte, he tells you, he's detaching himself from the Mazala Ilah. So now you know, the, 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 the Yoyna told him, it's not a question of Dinim and of Chasadim. It's a question of action of humans. If he is a tzaddik, he's like you, he's attached to Neutzer Chesed. If he's doing Avoinois, then he is attached to the other side. And that's what the Yoyna came to, uh, to teach him. With this Ale Zais, came to teach him that every action, like it says in the Mishnah, Every time a person wants to undertake an action, if it's a mitzvah, so he should look at the schar mitzvah. Can he get hefseida? Look at how much you're going to gain. The Gemara has a different way to look at it. You know, saying, look at the whole world being 50%. And your action will determine the fate of the world. Why? Because every time you're doing a mitzvah, you're attaching yourself to Neitzer Chesed, the mazala ilah, that controls all the other mazalas. Noyach wanted to go into the Neitzer Chesed to change the course of history of the Bnei Israel. That's the reason he wanted to uh, and 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 uh, 
I'm going to crystallize this idea into one thing that you say in the tefillah every day, and, and you will understand very clear. But beforehand, I would like to show you, finalize on this, to find a way out from um, the difference. So now you understand here one thing. By Shalach Esarev, it's a Yotzei Vashoyv. He kept on, 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 on coming in and out. Ad Yevoishes. Until Tishbi, then the Mayim, Me'al Aretz. I'm going to explain. This equals 1,370 equals Adam Nesher Sher Adam Nesher Which one I'm giving Arye, yeah, I forgot the self. And here we have Arye. The Merkava for Elioina, the Merkava of the Shechina Akdusha. Adam Nesher Shor Arye. He wanted to go up there and pull the Chasadim. That was the Machshava of Noyach from the very beginning, even when he sent the Oyrev. He says, I understand. In Achri Sayami, it's going to be extremely tough. And Amisro may be in the situation of Dora Mabul Chaz Visham or anything. He was, he won up the Noyach that Ish Tzadik Tamim, the say that in these words, it's uh, unbelievable. Um, and he wanted to protect the Bnei Yisro be Achri Sayami. And and help David Amelech so he can be misgale um, by the end of time. We know, and I'm going to crystallize all this, and you will see now when you're going to say Shmon Esrei, at least the second bracha is going to be totally different. What is life? We have life. We are alive. Says in the pasuk, "Ve'ata mechaye eskula." You say it in Vayberechda. Okay, it's a pasuk in Nechemia. Uh, "Ve'ata mechaye." I just want to focus on this word. Why? Because it keeps on coming back nonstop. Mechaye meisi matorav lo ishia. When we go to to a besachaim, chayes chem bedin ve'asil achayes chem bedin. Whoa. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mechaye equals 64. Equals Yudke of K. Aleph Hevav. Chachma Bina Vadas. We haven't arrived there on the show, Shabbos on the Oitzvah's time, but um, everything depends. Every time we say Kriyashma, we have Moichin of Chachma Bina Das coming down. And these are the Chiyas of a person. There's no other Chiyas in the world. But it's equal also you cannot have anything in this world that um, that if it's not contained if it's not then you cannot have any good a good needs barriers good means it has to be within a framework. And that framework is deemed. Even life is within the goof. 
which is the din. That's what it tells us here in, in the, so everyone that said, oh, I don't want to do this, it, it bothers me, I'm supposed to, but remember, you're going over the barrier, you're calling on the din, you here's on the both sides, two sides of the world, Chaim and Chaz Shalom din, and the person has to understand this. Um, and on the last thing, so that creates, so now we're going to say, uh, you understand what is the Tal Techia when HaKadosh Bochu is going to send the Tal Techia, he's going to send three Moichin, the three names, Yud Ke Vav Ke, Ke Ye, and, and from the Das, Aleph He Vav He. And this takes a dead person and revives it. And to close, I want to show you exactly the same idea. I just don't remember where I wrote it. Sorry, let me go back to the shear. Now, Let's see from the beginning of the mission if we can fall back on our feet. It says, Vaishalach esayoyinu, right? Equals 8.32. Equals Eretz Yisrael. Now you see the Midrash comes out. Those who say he went to Eretz Yisrael, yes, he went to Eretz Yisrael, but he didn't want to reveal that he went also to the Gan Eden because also Gan Eden is here somewhere in the words. You don't have time to go in it. Equals 32 times you'd give off K. You'd give off K because the 32 ways to the Chokhmah are only in Eretz Israel. But equals also Din. 13 times Din. You cannot have. The Nesib is a because the higher you get, automatically every little stain does tremendous damage. And therefore, wherever we're going to go in the Besamikdash, even a thought, a bad thought, five misa. And that shows us, that teaches us that from the from the 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 the, 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 the shlichus of the Oyrev and all the Yoyna, a person has to have one thing, the Dari. Whenever you know you can go there, the Torah says no there, the person that's gonna cross that, he has to know that he's gonna be met by Din on the other side. So now retroactively, if the person feels he's in the Din, means he crossed the border. Get back, Vatashov. Everything depends on Chuba. That's what the Zayar was reminding us of it. Bo chadrinoi le oilam, amen ve amen.